So one of my clients squat looks awesome when I elevate his heels. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I take the elevation away, just everything kind of falls apart. Right. More just like kind of can't sit back into his hips and it's just a lot of like spinal flexion, I guess, as opposed to like the moving back. So just kind of, mm -hmm. how do you kind of navigate going from heels elevated to just normal feet on the ground? Well, so so you're, you're using a, a compensatory strategy to, to create a squat, right? And so um, what it may be is that by, by dropping these seals down, number one, maybe there's a, a joint limitation in that regard. So you might make sure you got to clear the hip, you got to clear the knee, and you got to clear the ankle for, for normal range of motion. Now, if he can't manage center of gravity above his feet, then that can also drive an active limitation. So even if somebody has normal passive range of motion, when they have to behave against gravity, everything sort of changes in regards to what strategy they're going to be able to use. A lot of times, though, if you create an anterior load, you'll be able to keep their heels down. So something like a plate squat or a reaching squat of some kind. And then you can move that towards a regular goblet squat where the, the anterior load is moving closer and closer to their center of gravity. That eventually becomes a front squat and so on. Um, there are situations where um, because of the, the shape of the subtalar joint in some people's ankles, they don't have a whole lot of dorsiflexion that will allow them to, to squat under normal circumstances. And so the heels elevated thing uh, is, is really common. That's why you see a lot of people using weightlifting shoes because they've got the heel already elevated and then they can actually sit down and do a relatively pretty squat or they can perform their weightlifting movements that demand the deeper uh, squat patterning, right? So um, clear, clear the joints and then try to develop a strategy that allows them to shift posteriorly. So you put the, the load anterior, the reaching forward, and then see what happens from there. And like I said, it, it may just be this progressive patterning where they're going to learn how to manage their center of gravity with their heels on the ground. Because again, it, it, it stands the reason if they do a pre-squat, it's probably not gonna be a, a true hip related thing. It's probably gonna be more of a, a strategy associated with their center of gravity. That makes sense. Cause like yeah. we, I've cleared, or we've kind of cleared a good amount of the table stuff, but then just as soon as you bring gravity back into the equation, things kind of get a little bit messy. It's, it, and, and, and it, it's very, very common to, to see that because again, you have to manage a lot of stuff. There's there's internal forces to manage. There's airflow, uh, how you're producing intra-abdominal pressure, how you're pushing pressure up from, from the bottom of the pelvis, what strategy they're using there. So again, if if they stand up and, and they use a strategy that that alters the 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 position <clears throat> of the bottom of the pelvis alters the muscle activity there, now you're gonna have somebody that can't sit down simply because they're pushing uh, or they're, they're, they're using like a, a high tension strategy um, that doesn't allow the pelvis to move enough to, to let them sit down. So again, there's in a lot of this stuff, you, like I said, if you just play with center of gravity a little bit, you'll, you'll tend to, to sort of find a way to start. And then a lot of times you just give them enough you know, time in between training cycles so that, you know, maybe it's like four weeks with a plate squat and then four weeks with a goblet squat and four weeks with a double kettlebell front and then eventually you can get them to a nice pretty squat. And then sometimes you can't and then you just have to, to make the accommodation.